Hey guys, welcome to a very special episode. Today, we'll be starting a new series in CK2 called My HRE. Now, My HRE is a very... Now, let me explain what My HRE is. My HRE is a concept that I just kind of looked at at the Paradox forums and kind of thought of and thought this will kind of make an interesting series where basically what we're going to do is we're going to basically start as a count Work our way up to being the HRE, you know, getting to a kingdom, forming the HRE. Then once we form the HRE, we're going to conquer the entire world. What we're going to do from there is convert that entire world to uh, Europa Universalis 4 and just see the chaos and the stupidity that ensues afterwards. I mean, yeah, it's really going to be cool, I think. And my friend's messaging me with that right now, which I'm really getting mad at him for. So, I'm going to tell him I'm recording very kindly. Actually, I did it with lots of angry faces. Oh, did not mean to do that. <laughs> okay, but anyways, that's my idea of the game, of this entire scenario. So, I'm going to try it. We're going to do a custom game start because I'm one of those people that... Well, for the limited amount of times I've ever played this game, I kind of like being, you know, well, limited, I guess. And let's start out as, let's see, who should we do? We want to start out as somebody very weak that we can easily use to help us become powerful and good. Because I'm going to be honest with you people, I've played enough Victoria 2 and EU4 to get the concepts of it. And with this game, I'm a scholar. Like... In those, in the first two games, I'm a warrior. This, I'm a scholar. And what do I mean by that? In Victoria 2 and EU4, I can basically play the game, and if I really wanted to, I could be really good at it. But I usually make stupid decisions, because I'm usually like, eh, you know, we rebels, I don't want to deal with these rebels. Okay, let's go. Actually, the better word for it is not stupid. I'm more lazy than anything. <laughs> My realm falls apart because I'm lazy. But here... In EU4, it's basically a it's basically a condition where it's like, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. Well, I know the basic concept of what I'm supposed to do, like train armies to build up bigger troops, that then you can fa attack your leaves, so that then you can become a duke, so that then once you build up from there, you can become a, an empire, you know, an emperor, a kingdom, and then after that you become an empire, and all, so on and so forth. But for me, since I'm such a noob at this game, this basic concept and this basic, you know, line of thinking is so hard for me that I think you're going to be either frustrated with my tactics or entertained by how just noobish I am at this game. I'm hoping for the second one because I know how frustrating it can be to watch YouTubers who do not, you know, go by the traditional rules. But anyways, past all my ramblings, let's finally get to the character, character creation where um, I like to do some randomize. Let's see if we get some good characters. Uh, yeah, this guy, this guy looks like a king, all right, we're going to do my plate of arms, I usually like doing, I, for the brief time I've ever played this game, I'm going to do, um, party ale, because I kind of like that style, and let's see, what kind of crazy shapes can we make in this, hmm, hmm, that's good, and this, and what are going to be my colors, well, since, I personally like it. Green's gonna be my colors. I should probably make the other side green. Green, yes. Blue and green will be my colors. Attributes, and then finally the more important part that's actually supposed to be focused on is the actual attributes of this guy. And what is his name gonna be? His name is going to be Shredder Jane for the first name. Actually, you know what? Because this guy's probably gonna die very quickly. Randomize his name, Rudolph. And it's going to be named the Shredder James Dynasty. Wah, ah, ah. And let's see. Rudolf Shredder James will be the first guy that we know. He's a German Catholic. He has zero sons. He has fertility of nothing. And let's already give him some stuff. Like, for one, we want to make sure that he is scarred. Well, not scarred. I mean, wounded. Because you can usually... The good thing about this is that since it's a beginning game, you can usually get away with bad, some bad traits. Um, Drunkard's also another good one. Drunkard, because it's not... And unless you're going for, like, worshipping the Pope, you really don't need it. Okay? Um, and with that, then we want to make him... Can we get him to be a genius? Yes, we can be... We can make him a genius. Get him to be a genius, and... 
I really don't need any other traits besides those two. Um, well, I wish I could get Kaim, but I'm pretty sure Kaim will make us like 40. Yes, it will. We can I did yeah, let's detract that one. Um yeah, no kind. He could be an am amateur plotter, I don't care about that. And let's go up here. Let's go like this. My friend really wants to wants to steal the spotlight right now. I'm gonna have to have a talk with him after this. And let's get our skills just a little bit better. Intrigue, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get like really good. Um him being 40 uh <clears throat> Excuse me, people. Him being 45 in the beginning, I think if I'm lucky, he won't die in the very, very beginning of the game. Don't quote me on this, because he could do that. Okay? But hopefully he won't die in the beginning of the game. Now, we're going to be playing on Iron Man mode. Just because you guys can see how many achievements I have not gotten in this game. Okay? Okay. I think we're good. I think everything's fine. There is nothing. Eh, actually, no, I meant off because this is going to be a historical mod. So, I think that's good. So, Rudolph, Shredder, nah, I kind of want to randomize his name more. Augustine Shredder James, yeah! Now, that sounds more like authority. Plus, he's a genius, too, so it's supposed to reflect that. And, yeah. All right. I think I'm all ready. Are you guys ready? Let's begin the series. And I'll cut away so you guys don't have to see the loading screen. All right. Welcome, everyone, to a... To the very first time you guys have ever seen me play CK2. Um, and for people who have never played CK2 or don't know what it is, it's basically the. Mm, think of The Sims, just if you could do a lot more terrible things in The Sims, okay? That's what you should think of this game as. And I guess with World Conquest installed. So let's see, who would be my best steward? Um, wow, we have pretty bad people. Hmm. Uh, yours, you win by default, dude. Okay, Spy Master. Ooh, this guy's actually pretty good. Alright, and then Court Chaplain. Uh, this guy's okay. I guess we should get him. He looks like a good Court Chaplain. And, yeah, basically, who we are is. Da -da -da -da! Let me get to that screen. Well, we're basically a one province minor, a county of Gotland. Which is right here, and we are a part of what de jure, just, de jure duchy? We are part of the Duchy of Thuringia, which is all of this province is right here. So if we want to expand, we want to make sure we try to expand in this direction. Um, but first we have to do some well management to make sure everyone likes us. Um, we have a bishop and a regular baron who's underneath us, probably because we only have two towns. Yep. And we should probably start expanding our realm already. So, what we're going to do is we're going to appoint all of our guys. We're going to non proof relations, but start fabricating claims onto this guy right over here so we can maybe steal his county. Um, start training troops in our mainland. Start collecting taxes from our mainland. Um, I don't think, since our vassals don't really hate us, I'm not sure if we should do that. Um, but, corruption, we should probably do some things like that. And then, for this guy, I want him to improve religious relationships with the Pope. That way, the Pope will love us. And if anything goes wrong, we will make sure the Pope is good. And next, what we need to do is make sure that we are married off. And, because, as you know, unlike in the other, like, Victoria 2 and, like, uh... EU4, this game takes a very literal stance when it comes to like, yeah, you are really one person, and if your one person dies, you will be screwed for the rest of your life. So, what we're going to do is probably use our good finder, the find characters button, and see who we can find as lovely ladies that we can use to become, to become making babies, okay? Um, wait, not any gender, no. Okay, not any gender, no women. My religion, my culture, um, adults, yes, probably. A great house would be nice. I don't think they'll marry me. Married? No. Okay. And from these selections, we can find, if we can find a lovely lady. Ooh, this one's actually pretty good. Kind, humble, diligent, and underhanded rogue. Ooh. This would be very, very hard. 
but she has such awesome traits that it'd be like a waste. It'd be a shame, not a waste, to not marry her. I mean, the three reasons you marry in this game is for traits, for for um, claims, and just because you want to do a eugenics program. And actually, now thinking about it, this wouldn't. None of these traits are inheritable. I mean, she'd be really good for like um, marriage later, but none of these traits are inheritable. I mean, the attractive trait could be passed down, but this person's kind of terrible, so I don't want to use her. Um, let's get a high diplomacy one. Ooh, great eminence. That could be really useful. Wow, she's, she just keeps popping up. Okay, you know what? The courtier of Hagrid, I'm going to arrange a marriage with you. Because you know what? You are awesome. Yes, uh, you're marrying, uh, marrying a courtier, a lowborn. You know what? I really don't care. She's an awesome lowborn. Don't you dare talk about my wife that way, okay? And so with that, now we will finally begin the game, and now you will see massive pop-ups sooner or later about people dying. And there's our marriage, where I think we should actually redeem ourselves by getting like 50 prestige back, because we lost a couple of that, and the one gold's really not useful. And so, now that we have a wife, what we have to do is approve limited crown authority. Limited crown authority is not bad for me at this point. So, you know, eh, we could do that, King. Okay, the one that we really cannot let them approve, though, is if they ask for um, medium crown authority. Because if they ask for medium crown authority, that basically means we cannot go to war with anyone right next to us. And that would be bad. And apparently I am leading troops. That is bad. I mean, I do have a 14 state marshal. And I have gone in from wounded to scarred. Yes, and this is why you always choose a scarred trait. is because it does this. If the wounded is in the very beginning of the game, you'll get the scarred trait. Which actually gives you a good bonus. Which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now I get a couple monthly prestige. Which in a couple, I would say 28, roughly a long time. <laughs> I will be able to displace my prestige loss and start actually gaining more prestige. So, in the in retrospect, I kind of just like basically game the system in my own special way, but it was a good game the system. Now, the next thing we have to be looking out for is the yearly feast, because the yearly feast is going to be helping us try to, I guess, pull the summer fair could also be very useful. Let's do that. Oh. And then the most infamous button in the entire game, which is borrow money from the Jews. Okay, but wait, one of them could juggle. Uh, game piety? Do I need piety? I don't think I need piety at this point. Um, let's just gain some prestige because my piety is okay right now. I don't need piety, but. The infamous borrow from Jews button, which is if you haven't ever played this game, it has this button where it's borrows from Jews. Now, why is this very important? Because watch what happens. You borrow from the Jews, and then buy indulgence for sins. Wow. N won't do that yet. And, oh, wait, you can't do it? Oh, dang it. They must have changed that. Something must have happened, or money, money, money. Hmm. I don't really want him to be stressed, especially since he hasn't had any children. Once he has at least one child, then he can die. But I need at least one child. Okay, alright, uh, humble, ignore him, gain the humble trait. Yeah, good job, dude. So, yeah, this guy, oh, and I also have to choose that ambition for your people, because otherwise, yeah, they don't, they should probably have children, let's just say that. So, I'm gonna make him have a son, because we need a son to carry on our legacy and dynasty of the Shredder James, and our good house name, but... What I think I'm going to be focusing in, in here on is, can I, wait, can I build another holding? Not yet, I still don't have enough. But what I'm going to be focusing in on is, basically, well, I could invite somebody to court, which demand duchy from Liege, that's not going to work, because they own the duchy. Go on a pilgrimage. Okay. Am I totally ready for this? Yes. Let's go on a pilgrimage. Yeah! So, this is a good button, so everyone... There was a number of different holy places that you could visit on your pilgrimage. All of them are considered most sacred by the Holy Church. But a somewhat closer destination might mean a safe journey. I shall visit the holy site in the west. I will go to one of the ancient sites of Jerusalem or Rome. 
Now, normally what the... I guess I'll do this one because this is what I would literally do if I was going on a pilgrimage. I mean, if you go on a pilgrimage, make sure you go to the most, the most like, prestigious places. Get you the most stuff. So Jerusalem and Rome are two oldest city holy places under the Catholic Church. I, personally, since I am a great man, known from the Shredder James dynasty, go into the Holy Land, man. Let's do this. Alright, let's see. Can my game support for speed? Hmm. My things are packed, everything's in order. At the end of the day, journey to the Holy Land awaits. My journey begins. Also, by the way, I should also mention we are at war with the Caliphate, but I haven't really been paying attention. And apparently our first event has happened. You look across the beautiful valley stretching out before you. It would be a beautiful moment, if not for the fact that there should be no valley here. You are a pilgrim in an unfamiliar land, and you have no idea where you are. If only I hadn't listened to those useless peasants that gave me directions. I could gain a trade Roth, or if only I listened more to those peasants that gave me directions. Or patient. Hopefully we might get patient, because if this guy could get patient, this guy would be an awesome... Ah, oh, dang it, we didn't get patient. And, so then, what happens next, everyone? The journey is long and hard. You, your feet are sore and your backs as well. Far from the castle kitchens, the food is barely edible, and on top of that, you seem to feel cold all the time. Perhaps you were not quite cut out for this pilgrimage. My fate will see me through. Or, maybe this was a bad idea, I should stay and rest for a while. Which gains a 20% chance of ill, a 50% chance of cynical. Uh... I, <laughs> you know what, <laughs> my faith will prove me to be live, yeah, go faith, so the church preaches celibacy and my friend tried to lure me into Hermiton by showing me the pleasures of life, I can't really decide if I want to enjoy life or wait for heaven, I can try pleasures now which will give me fertility, oh my gosh, if I, this is going to be insane, people, because if I combine this, oh, I have no valid ambitions. Oh, oops. Well, if, but wait, if I combine this with my already, like, um, great, um, uh, fertility, oh. You know, let's, let's go with the pleasures of life. Um, you know why? Because if I get this and combine this with the, with the event of the, um, have a son event, which basically, the ambition of the have a son, that basically already gives me a 20% fertility rate. Plus this, that basically means this guy's like a 60% fertility. Unless he has, he already had a base stat of like 20. So this guy's like, this guy literally can produce babies in his sleep. That's insane. Okay, but anyways everyone, we have finally arrived at Jerusalem. You are having arrived at Jerusalem, passing by the Monument of Olives. You enter through the city gate and are immediately overcome by a feeling of having made a truly epic journey. The city is filled with people of all creeds and colors, the air heavy with smells of strange spies and foreign plants. You make your way through the, the throng of people and animals, excited by the knowledge that you are now close to Via Dolesia and the other holy places. You plan to also visit the church at Navitidia of Bethlehem, but first of all, you need to find some place to stay. After all, you, you wouldn't want to be forced to sleep in a stable, would you? Oh, religious references, how I love thee. Okay, and as you walk around on this holy ground, you follow the secrets and the essence of God. The teachings of the Holy Church have never felt more relevant to you now, and images the knowledge contained in the scriptures stored here. So, do I become a scholar and a zealous person? Well, you know, if I would be to be honest, it seems stupid not to take this. Let's do it! <laughs> become a scholar? And on a pilgrimage, so that gives me some monthly faith, and it gives me a scarred, oh wow, scarred, genius, amateur plotter, and I have now officially come home after my great experience, and I now am officially a pilgrim. And I still have no valid ambitions, shoot. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Slow down game, slow down game. I don't want my game to be tanking on me yet. Okay, but yes, everyone. That was our very first pilgrimage. It was a quite successful one, I would say, where I basically became a pilgrim, became a scholar, and I look really good right now in terms of stats. Like, he was looking really bad a second ago. Now he looks really good. And, uh, consider named appears as the court. Oh, I see. If I want to get some, if I want to invite more people to my court, I can do that. 
And I would love to say thank you guys for watching. This has been the very first episode of I hope to say a long series, but we will have to see if this guy of Augustine of Shredded James Dynasty will be able to live long enough to start fabricating claims, start building up an empire, and start doing things that we all know we have to do in Victoria in not Victoria 2 CK2. And so I want to thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.